One of the biggest concerns that I see in people over the age of 50 is building and maintaining their muscle mass so they can stay active and independent as they age. Now, when they come to see me for physical therapy, largely their concern is finding exercises to help them get stronger. But all of the exercises in the world aren't going to make a difference if you're not backing it up with the proper nutrition. Now, all aspects of nutrition are important for maintaining general health, for maintaining a healthy weight, and for increasing or maintaining your muscle mass. But one of the biggest mistakes that I see people make is not getting enough protein. And there are a lot of reasons why you may not get enough protein as you age. For example, when you're cooking for a family, you're likely to make a large meal, but as the kids move out, or even if you become widowed or if you're living by yourself, you may not have the desire to go to all the trouble of making a big meal just for yourself or for yourself and a spouse. Additionally, you start to lose your smell a little bit as you age and because you can't smell your food as well, it doesn't taste as good. And when it doesn't taste as good, you don't have as much of a desire to eat. Furthermore, you're becoming less active and so you have a lower energy requirement. And so that's another reason why you may not intake as much food in general. Now, when we decrease our caloric intake, we tend to decrease that proportionally with what we're used to eating. And so you decrease the amount of carbohydrates that you eat, you decrease the amount of fat that you eat, and you also decrease the amount of protein that you eat. And because of that, as you're decreasing everything, your protein intake is going to decrease. Now you'd think as you're less active and you need less caloric intake that you'd also need less protein, but actually the reverse is true. The American College of Sports Medicine recommends that you actually have a slight increase in your protein intake after you get to be the age of 50 just to maintain your muscle mass. So if we look at the normal recommended daily allowance for protein intake, it's 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, or 0.35 grams of protein per pound of body weight. Now, as you get to be over the age of 50, the American College of Sports Medicine actually recommends that you increase that intake to one gram per kilogram of body weight. And if you're participating in physical activities, for example, you're cycling or you're lifting weights, then that goes up even further. If you're a little bit active, then you may have to increase that to 1.2 grams per kilogram of body weight. Or if you're very active, that can go up as high as 1.7 grams per kilogram of body weight. And again, if you're used to using pounds, that's roughly 0.5 to 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight. Now, if you look at the recommended daily allowance of 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight, and then 0.8 grams per pound of body weight for an active adult, that's a big discrepancy. There are 2.2 pounds per kilogram, and so that means you're roughly doubling the amount of protein intake that you need if you're an active older adult. Now, to further increase that discrepancy, a lot of bodybuilding recommendations are that you eat one gram per pound of body weight. And most people over 50 aren't trying to build as much muscle as a bodybuilder, but that just goes to show you that people who have been building a lot of muscle for a long time eat significantly higher amounts of protein than the recommended daily allowance. And largely you can do so safely if you don't have any kidney problems. Now I would recommend checking with your doctor, particularly if you do have kidney problems, but for most people, a significantly higher amount of protein than the recommended daily allowance is really what's needed to build muscle mass. Additionally, if you're recovering from an injury and you're trying to rebuild tissues, for example, ligaments or tendons, muscles, all of those require an increased protein requirement as well. I always tell people that if you think about building a house, your carbohydrates are like your workforce. They give you the energy. 
but the protein is the bricks. It's the stuff that the house is actually built out of. And you can have a lot of workers show up to the job site, but if they don't have any bricks to lay down, then the house isn't going to get built no matter how many workers are there. So it is important that you get enough protein in your diet, particularly if you're looking to build muscle mass, maintain muscle mass, or recover from an injury. So how do you do that? Well, the sources of protein are number one animal products, for example, meat, fish, dairy. Those are all complete proteins. They have all of the essential amino acids in the proper proportions that your body needs to use them. You can also get protein from peas, beans, grains, nuts and seeds. Those all have proteins, but they don't necessarily have the complete complement of amino acids in the right proportions as animal products do. So if you are a vegetarian, especially if you're vegan, you need to be really careful about making sure you're mixing and matching your proteins. It's not just about the overall amount, but making sure that you're getting a good complement, that you're getting all the amino acids that you need to use that protein properly in your body. Now, if you're looking at animal products, for example, meat, a general rule of thumb is that a four ounce raw serving of meat is somewhere around 25 grams of protein. And so to use a simple, easy rule of thumb, one pound of meat has roughly 100 grams of protein. Now, if you're a 75 kilogram individual or 165 pound individual, if you look at just the recommended daily allowance of 0.8 grams per kilogram, the absolute minimum that you need to avoid deficiency, that's about 60 grams of protein per day. And I see a lot of people that don't even get that much through their diet as they age. Now, that's not a ton. If you are eating eight ounces of meat or an eight ounce steak, you're gonna get fairly close to that in just one meal. But if you have decreased your appetite and you're not eating quite as much, it's very possible that you can get below even that amount. Now, if you look at one gram per kilogram, the American College of Sports Medicine recommendations for someone who's over the age of 50, that increases to 75 grams for a 165 pound individual or a 75 kilogram individual. And then if you further increase that to one gram per pound of body weight, you're looking at about 165 grams of protein. So for most people who are say 75 kilograms or 165 pounds and are over the age of 50 are somewhat active, you're most likely going to need somewhere between 75 grams of protein per day and 165 grams of protein per day. So what do you do if you don't think you can stomach eating a pound or more of meat per day? Well, you can add eggs to your breakfast. You can intake more dairy if you don't have dairy allergies, or you can supplement. There are lots of high quality proteins on the market. You do have to be a little bit careful because the supplement industry is largely unregulated. And so if you're buying the cheapest product on the market, you're probably not getting the best value, but you don't necessarily need the most expensive one either. I'll put a link in the description to the protein supplement that I use. It may or may not be the best for you, but this is one that I've personally used. Additionally, if you are a vegetarian, there are vegetarian protein supplements. For example, soy is one example, although you do have to be a little bit careful with how much soy you're consuming, particularly if you have a family history of breast cancer. Or pea protein and brown rice protein are other vegetarian sources that are common in non-dairy protein products. So hopefully you found this video helpful to better understand your protein requirements so that all the effort that you're putting in in the gym or at home or in physical therapy aren't just going to waste. I would encourage you to track your nutrition intake, particularly the protein, for a week and just see how much you're actually getting. And then if you are deficient, use some of the suggestions that I mentioned earlier in this video to increase your protein requirements. Again, talk to your doctor, especially if you do have kidney problems because 
the more protein you intake, the more nitrogen you have to output through your kidneys, and that can be a little bit harder on your kidneys. So again, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.